जय श्री राम वॉट इज अ मंत्रा द वर्ड मंत्र हैज टू सिलेबल्स मन एंड त्रा मन इज द माइंड एंड त्रा इज द टूल सो मंत्र मीन्स ए टूल फॉर द माइंड जस्ट एज ए पेन और ए स्क्रू ड्राइवर इज अ हैंड टूल सो विच बेसिकली मीन्स दैट मंत्रास डोंट क्रिएट एनी मैजिकल रिजल्ट आउट ऑफ नदिंग they are tools and the effort is yours you can use them to create magic in your life but the work has to be done by you so a screw driver by its own achieves nothing if it is shelved in a drawer and uh, you know kept aside similarly a mantra which is lying in the pages of the book hmm, without your involvement and application and energy uh, cannot produce any results if you put on the right kind of work and effort and dedication with sincerity you can create magic remember also in sanskrit the roots can have many meanings therefore the root tra also means to protect therefore manaye trayati iti mantra or manat trayati iti mantra means that which protects the mind is a mantra so mantra simply can mean a tool a tool for your mind or it can also mean that which protects the mind manaye trayati iti mantra other writers and sources they say tra also means energy prana the power with which the mind can uh, function the mind functions and uh, the power that uh, your mind can access by chanting the mantra the most important part is mantras do not necessarily have a meaning mantras don't necessarily have a meaning they are not language sentences have meaning mantras have power each letter each syllable each each uh, joint letter in a mantra has a power a vibration of its own and correctly chanting it can connect you with that power you cannot understand the meaning of a mantra the way you can understand a sentence but you can feel the energy of the mantra resonate within your being so jai shri ram you see jai shri ram the way you chant it also makes a difference so these are very powerful rama mantra is believed to be the most powerful of all trying to explain a mantra is very difficult because it often doesn't make sense so because because some mantras follow grammatical rules and some don't some don't um, they have their own vibrations and so most mantras are in sanskrit and they do follow a prescribed structure but it is a structure of vibrations but not of grammar uh, so we must uh, not make any unnecessary efforts to decode the meanings interestingly there are many other mantras like uh, shabar mantras which are in colloquial languages and may sound like nonsense and yet they have a lot of power so mantras do not need to make any linguistic sense the power is in the sounds they create and not the sense of the words uh, some more things about mantras you see the structure is very loose in sanskrit uh broadly they can be divided into three categories three parts the name of the deity the purpose of the mantra and the pallavi the repeat the ending the refrain the reprise so mantras usually end in a neutral sanskrit word namaha or they can end in a feminine swaha or the masculine phat uh, all the three parts are necessary for it to be considered a mantra Uh, of course there are mantras which do not fo- follow all these rules and still they are very effective and called mantras also so this is uh, a little bit about the mantras the vedas say in the nasadiya hymn which is the creationism hymn in the vedas the nasadiya sukta uh, talks of the origin of the universe uh, there was nothing but a great void and the the vastness of nothing Uh, existed and the universe was in a state of complete silence and darkness and then the one emerged powered by its own desire to create and from the point of desire uh, of heat uh, came all creation 
the primal sound om or shabda brahma or pranavanada was the sound that began to fill the void and the sound of om vibrates throughout all creation by the way and even nasa scientists uh, claimed uh, that the sound that they hear yeah, emanating from the sun is om om so the primal sound is called pranav because it is the very first of all creation so we also call it om the formless divine uh, om is the formless divine form hmm, of the universe uh, in the manner of sound sanskrit uh, sanskrit is called devavani uh, deva bhasha devavani the speech of gods and the script of sanskrit is called devanagari devanagari that means the city of the gods so the script itself is the residence of the divine since each letter in sanskrit is the sound body of the goddess vak vak shakti vak vak is the goddess of speech each shabda letter of the alphabet holds her essence that is her energy which can be uh, harnessed through mantras the beauty is uh, if one has a spiritual bent of mind then the sound of mantras when properly chanted create the sound body of the deity uh, we have to raise ourselves to higher levels of consciousness through yoga sadhana uh, dhyana and for example if one chants om namah shivaya om namah shivaya in dhyana one would be able to see the form of shiva as this is re- recited so the rishis who gave us these mantras could visualize the forms on higher levels and describe what they saw and that gave us the forms of the deities that we know today the forms being an attempt to depict the formless vibrations of a much higher and subtler realm so that is the power of mantras each letter of the sanskrit alphabet is a mantra in its own right the number of sanskrit letters is usually accepted as 50 Uh, but uh, uh, number occasionally varies and uh, uh, 54 is also accepted it starts from a to ksha therefore it's called aksha hmm? a is the first letter and the last is ksha so aksha akshara hmm? imperishable anyway aksha mala so garland of letters the line of 54 letters is the original aksha mala the garland of letters and where do these letters come from well according to uh, puranas they come from the primordial shakti kali goddess kali who wears the varnamala the garland of letters around her neck uh, which are actually symbolized the skulls are there but each skull symbolizes the uh, uh, the letters so that's called the varnamala the garland of letters around her neck of course other puranas attributed to goddess saraswati the goddess of knowledge and the source of the vedas whose other name is vak devi or vak the goddess of speech so the letters of the sanskrit alphabet are called matrikas because like i already said each letter of the sanskrit alphabet is a mantra in its own right every letter is a mantra the letters of the sanskrit al- alphabet are called matrikas which means uh, little mothers each one is a potent force and the whole universe is created by the power of these matrikas some mantras are very powerful and are called the bija mantras bija means the seed seed syllables uh, they are created by adding the divine ma sound to the single letter or to two or more conjoined letters bija mantras are like seeds which hold the potential to grow into massive trees they may be they seem small actually but they pack a lot of power and heighten the energy of any mantra to which they are added often when mantras are given to the inexperienced the bijas are removed first because they hold too much power and additionally mantras are supplemented by yantras y a n t r a in english yantra means a mystical diagram which is actually a geometric diagram so which is uh, to anchor and hold the power of the mantra in one place just as our body holds the mind so the yantra is the body of the mantra well so 
Yantras are created to fix the powerful energies created by mantra chanting, which would otherwise dissipate. Now, yantras are therefore called the houses in which the gods reside. So temples which are considered the residence of gods have activated awakened yantras buried in their foundations, holding the power for the use of those who visit the temple. So in all temples you will have these yantras buried in the foundation. So a yantra is a very powerful addition to focus the power of the mantra. But that would require a lot of study and anyway. So we will not go too deep into these yantras. Uh, it is sufficient in Kali Yuga to learn a few mantras and chant them, which suit one's uh, temperament. That, of course, only a guru can decide. The main source of our mantras are Vedas and, of course, Tantric texts are also there. Uh, tantric texts are also uh, have a rich uh, uh, collection of mantras. And uh, um, the anthologies in Tantra, uh, there is one called Mantra Mahodadhi, which contains... Uh, a huge collection of mantras. Uh, but unfortunately, Tantra has acquired a bad name in recent times because of the stupid propaganda. Uh, many Hindus also think it's all black magic and foreigners think it is all about sex. Uh, this is nowhere near the truth. Tantra, the word Tantra basically means ritual. And Tantra additionally uh, was the experimental part of the... It is a kind of spiritual laboratory. Tantras are basically... Uh, you can call them spiritual laboratory uh, uh, practices. So, uh, they are the experimental part of the search for the divine. And tantrics were the ones who did the rituals, recited mantras and noted their effects. And all of these things have come down to us as the rules which we observe today. Many of our rituals have come from tantras. And the puja that we do at home is more tantric than Vedic. So please understand that Tantra is not a negative word, it's not a bad word. Tantra basically means the way you do things. And connected with our worship, it is, like I said, it's an experimental part of the search. And Tantric lore is there, so many powerful mantras are there. And so the next question is how many mantras are there? Well, nobody can count. Uh, some num uh, Traditionally, they say it is seven crores. So basically what it means is there are infinite number. So, another classification of mantras is also uh, Shanti mantras, meant for peaceful purposes. Sthambhana mantras, Sthambhana, to stop the energies of others from reaching you. Uchatana, Akarshana and Marana mantras, which are harmful yeah, to eliminate, destroy, kill and all that. Uh, Uchatana, Akarshana, Marana, these words will be found in the shlokas also. And Vashikarana mantras, meant to control others. So these are all tamasic, many tamasic mantras are also there. Uh, a truly sattvic person should resort to shanti mantras and uh, mantras like Gayatri mantra is the most powerful. So I hope uh, this small discussion on mantras uh, has clarified a few doubts and I hope you make every effort to learn the Gayatri mantra and Maha mantra that is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. In the Kali Santarana Upanishad, it is mentioned that for the Kali Yuga, this mantra, this is called Maha Mantra, that is sufficient. So chant, I chant the Maha Mantra even when I do exercise, you know, when I do workouts in a gym, every set runs according to the Maha Mantra. When I take a flight of stairs also, it is the Maha Mantra. So try to incorporate the Maha Mantra in your breathing and you can find... Uh, magical transformations in your life. Jai Shri Ram.